Have you ever wanted to make a movie? Thanks to technology, anyone can make a movie today. Filmmaking has become the new garage band. Welcome to Frame Lines, the show about people making movies. Our featured filmmaker is Mickey Fisher from Ironton, Ohio. Mickey's been making films for about eight years. Let's get his take on the process. I make movies in Ohio because it's, it's a mission for me to tell the stories of the people that I grew up with and around, and, it's, and to tell the story of the area. And I feel like I was so lucky to, to grow up in a place that is, not only has so many great stories to tell, but also is so beautiful. Uh, I'm on my third feature film right now. The, the first movie that I made was called The King of Irontown, and uh, it was a drama that was set and shot in Ironton, basically, in, uh, in my hometown. And it was a story about two brothers who enter a local boxing contest. The second movie is called Summer Nuts, and I didn't shoot that in Ohio, mostly uh, shot it just outside of Ohio in Indiana. But again, a lot of my cast and crew and everybody came from Ohio. Um, and that's about the world's worst softball team based on a, a somewhat true story of a, a team that I was on in Cincinnati. Comedy, documentary style comedy, and the new movie is called Autumn Mixtape, and it's a collection of short stories about relationships. Um, there are four stories, four different couples, and they're all in, in varying stages. One couple is on their first date, another couple is having their first kiss, uh, another couple it's the major fight, kind of turning point in the relationship, and then the last story is uh, reconciliation between high school sweethearts. After doing two movies where there were a lot of elements involved, like with Summer Nuts, there were softball games to coordinate. Um, you know, we shot 30 hours of footage in 10 days. Um, with King of Irontown, there was a huge fight sequence at the end where we had a couple hundred extras in a gym and a half hour of, uh, of the movie to shoot in two days. Um, and so I really wanted to do something small. I wanted to do something with just two characters. And, and when I realized I wanted to do that, I started looking at things I already written. And I found that I, I, I already had these, this natural progression of one relationship. And I thought for a while of doing that with just one couple and, and showing them the four different scenes in a relationship. And I thought, you know what, I, I kind of like the idea if they're gonna be short stories for each story to have its own identity, like its own look and its own sound. And, and then it just made sense for it to be a different couple uh, in each time. And um, all stood against the backdrop of the fall because it's such a beautiful time in Ohio. There's a new website called Indiegogo dot com and uh, and what basically what it is the idea is that you you start with the fans from the very beginning of your process and and the idea is that the fans not only decide what movies they want to see they decide what movies get made and you go to them from the very early stages and involve them in the process uh, you can you can post your script you can post clips and things like that you can post your uh, videos and trailers from other movies that you've done and you start trying to build an audience and a fan base from the very beginning ask them to donate to your movie in exchange for certain things. You, you set up perks. Um, and the perks can be anything from a part in the movie to you know, a signed copy of the poster, things like that. The money that you get from Indiegogo that people, um, that people contribute to your project is, is not an investment. They don't make their money back. There's no return on, on it. It's not an investment at all. It's a donation to your movie. And, uh, and that's the way it worked. I was really fortunate to have people who believed enough in, in me and in the idea to you know, to, to donate that kind of money. It's, it, 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 was, it was a really humbling experience. You know, how do you make a feature film for $1,500? I would say you have to look at the things that are around, look at the elements and the resources that you have at your disposal. King of Irontown, I was like, you know, I know I have these actors. Uh, I know I have these locations. I already, when I wrote the script, I wrote it for specific locations I had in mind that I knew I could get for free. And the crazy thing was is that I, I set a really high goal. I set a goal of $40,000. I think I'm gonna aim really high and see what happens. And um, within hours of me launching the site, I had raised over $1,000. I thought, this is gonna be easy. I'm gonna have 40 grand in like two or three days. And then I didn't raise another dollar for three weeks. So the first stage, I raised around $3,600. And um, I shot two, I shot half the movie with that. I, I t took a, a few months, like five or six months, edited the first stuff, started you know, sending out videos and showing what I was doing. And then I went to raise money for the second, uh, for this uh, third story that we shot. And within a day, uh, two days, I had raised another $1,000. And I used that 
to shoot the third movie. So it's working so far. Every time I'm going out and and uh, doing what low budget filmmakers do best, which is beg for money, and uh, and, and have managed to uh, to make it so far. If you're a, if you're a movie fan out there, if you're somebody who just loves watching movies, and if you're watching this right now because you're interested in what goes into making movies, and I would say there's no better way to do that than by supporting independent artists and people who are local. Um, there are so many people in the Columbus area that I know that are making movies that are really striving to make stuff of excellence. And, and, and so go out and support those. If you see the screenings in the paper, if you see DVDs for sale or things like that, then you know give, give somebody a shot and pick them up. This is my creed right now, is that if, if, somebody, if people aren't paying attention to you and what you're creating, it's not that you're not working hard enough. It's, it's not that, because everybody, I know a lot of some people work hard and just haven't had a chance yet. You keep doing it until you make something so great that people can't ignore it, that they must pay attention to it. And something they're passionate about that they have to tell other people about. It's our responsibility to keep going until we, until we get there. So if you're a filmmaker out there, just good luck and, and stay at it and hopefully we'll see each other there. Gail Mezzi talks about the Columbus Film Commission and how she helps producers making films in the community. Um, my name's Gail Mezzi, and I'm the director of the Greater Columbus Film Commission, otherwise known as Film Columbus. I graduated from Capital University in marketing, communications, and um, some production. And years later, I started working at Mills James Productions, which is now one of the largest production companies in the country. Uh, at the time, there was seven people working there, and I kind of grew with the company, and I worked there for about 13 years. I started Film Columbus uh, after there were a few shoots that were here in town, actually more than a, sh a few, there were probably a dozen or so shoots in town that they brought in crew from Cleveland and Cincinnati. It ups was upsetting to me because people said they couldn't find crew in Columbus when there was plenty of crew. It was just, just wasn't easy to find them because we didn't have a film commission. A film commission is an economic development tool used by communities or um, municipalities or states. It's a resource for um, people that are looking for either crew, equipment, locations, um, anything related to film production, um, whether that, that could be a still shoot, a still photography shoot, it could be um, something for the web, it could be commercials, corporate, it could be a major motion picture, it could be a small indie film. When productions come they to Central Ohio, they'll spend money in hotels, restaurants, they'll hire crew, um, they'll get tape stock, cabs, you know, the money is, is, and the economic impact is pretty broad. And most people that come here and work are very surprised with how metropolitan and how, um, how great the city is. It's easy to get around. Almost any place within Central Ohio is within 20 minutes from the airport, 20 minutes to a half hour from the airport. Uh, it's friendly, it's very film friendly. There's no permitting needed in most locations. We've got plenty of crew, um, it, we've got great restaurants. It's a um, pretty inexpensive town to, to, to work in. People are surprised when they, when they give me a call and they're asking for specific crew members or they're asking for maybe a specific piece of equipment that generally we do have that here. Um, it's just, just a phone call away. Well, generally what I would do if a producer called looking for a specific location, I would call those locations first to see if they were available. Um, we would, I would either give them pictures, I'd um, send them pictures online, or I would, uh, if they came into town, we'd get in the car and we'd go look at the locations ourselves. The website is critical to, it is the central nervous system and kind of the brain of, and the Rolodex of what we do. Um, it, because there are people that, that will go to the website that I won't talk to on the phone and people get hired through that website that I may not ever really know that they get hired through the website. Who says you can't learn something on this show? Here's a quick filmmaking tip. Hi, I'm Scott Spears and today we're going to talk about China Lanterns, which are a great little soft light on the cheap. You can find them at stores like Ikea, Pier One, World Market, and on, uh, online at film supply sites like filmtools.com. They're gonna be about four to 10 bucks. And basically they're just a paper lantern that gives you a really great soft light on the cheap. Okay, I usually use a, a 200 watt, just regular bulb in my China lanterns. You can go lower than that. I wouldn't go higher, 300 watts. 
is probably pretty extreme and might actually set the China Lantern on fire. Uh, the bulb is inserted in the top of the China Lantern and goes on a metal frame and that's what holds it in place so it doesn't touch the sides and burn the China Lantern. We'll start with the subject backlit and then we're going to fire up our China Lantern to provide a nice soft light. Now we're going to zoom out to see where the placement is of the China Lantern in relationship to the subject. Placement is dictated by the size of the frame and in a close-up you can actually move it in a lot tighter. Sometimes you might want to change the color temperature of your China Lantern. And so how do you do that? How do you get a gel in there? Well, I just take a gel, shove it inside the China Lantern and secure it with a C47 media attachment clip, otherwise known as a clothespin. Uh, just put that down into the center of the light and then just uh, secure it in place with the uh, C47. I usually rig my uh, China Lanterns off a C stand and get it high out of the frame. The, the joy of China Lanterns are they're so lightweight that you can actually tape the cord to the ceiling if you want to, but use gaff tape and make sure it's plenty secure. Uh, the gaff tape will not pull the paint off the ceiling, so you don't want to damage the location. We hope you found this tip informative about China Lanterns. Expect more from Framelines. Framelines went on location for a shoot of the web series Two Doors Down with creators Louis Cowan and Scott Summit and their cast and crew. My spidey sense is tinkling. <laughs> you ever feel like you're being watched? Uh-huh. Hey, Jen! Come on, go, go, go. <laughs> I think they saw me this time. Well, you've certainly given them enough opportunity. Oh, we uh, started working on this uh, the show uh, probably about the January 2008. Uh, it's uh, a show about a divorced couple who uh, share shared custody of the child. They have very separate um, philosophies on how they were to bring up their child, and there's a lot of uh, friction going on right there. Divorce became the uh, the box in which we could put the stories, and so we turned up with two doors down. And uh, then I was working on a, another short with uh, my co-creator um, Scott Summit, and we were doing a show where two polar opposite people were living right next door to each other. So we thought, ah, okay, how about we put these this couple living basically two doors down from each other and see what happens. We have uh, several goals with this. First, we're going to release this as a web uh, television show, a, we a web webisode, I guess, as, as, the, as the kids like to call it. I think that uh, filmmaking here in Ohio is a building process. And um, I remember when I was in Chicago, living in Chicago, thinking, I really want to get into film. and. And then I was looking for a place to move to, and Columbus came up and I thought, why would I want to go to Columbus to do film? And uh, it turned out to be the best thing to do because in Columbus you can start small and you can build your skills. And uh, that was the best step to take for filmmaking here because, um, uh, you know, the, the quality of the crew that we have now and on Two Doors Down is, is a result of everybody going off and doing their starting projects, working together with other directors who have more experience, and, and getting that, that skill level up. And that's phenomenal to see. The, the show takes place in Columbus. It uh, features actors and crew members and production people from Columbus. So a lot of the, the local businesses and uh, property owners have been very, very gracious to uh, let us shoot you know, on location right here in Columbus to kind of represent the different flavors, the different locations, and uh, everything that you know, Columbus has got to offer. When I first got involved with the Columbus indie scene, I was expecting you know, some, a couple of people with handheld video cams, and it isn't that. It is people who are very dedicated to the craft and I am overwhelmingly impressed every time I see something come out of it. You learn that just because we're in the Midwest doesn't mean you can't be part of something bigger than what you would anticipate out of Columbus, Ohio. The th nice thing about a place like Columbus is you do have a lot more freedom. It allows you to do more things, to be a little more experimental, especially if you're doing an improvisational film. Um, and there is a tremendous amount of talent locally there's a lot 
of uh, creative people here. I was very, very surprised that there is such a, a, a big film community right here in Columbus in central Ohio. It was, you know, uh, amazed that there are so many, you know, uh, production houses and directors and writers and actors who are pursuing their own projects. We did some extensive casting and and, um, and we, we got a really, really good pool of people because um, what we were looking to do in the casting process was to, um, to have people improvise because this is a, a totally retro scripted show. So we come up with the script ideas and the actions and then the actors bring their own life to it. So really what we needed to find were people who could bring their own personalities out and we found, you know, we've got um, different people uh, playing um, roles like uh, my girlfriend is played by Jessica Cameron. She's coming from a, a fashion background and which is just perfect for the character of Summer who's all free love and all of that. And then we got Amber Mike who plays my ex-wife and uh, you know she's got a whole different approach to things as well. Well Stephen Pierce is uh, Jennifer's, Jennifer's second husband and now uh, I'm, as the new husband, obviously a little threatened because she has that bond with Kevin, that relationship that I, I don't have, and obviously that's part of the interplay between my character and his. Well, I think that this has been so well orchestrated, and I think that there, as far as an inner struggle, there really isn't one, but I definitely think there's a day-to-day -day challenge just with everything from blocking and how to do it a real and authentic way. Louis definitely demands the best out of you, which as an actor, I think has helped me tremendously. There are days when I think I'm giving 100% and he shows me that I'm not. He pushes me to about 150%. So I would say over the past five weeks, I've grown more than I thought was possible. But it certainly can feel a little bit nerve-wracking if you focus on the fact that the person who's going to be critiquing your performance is also in the scene and standing right next to you. <laughs> He takes a little bit longer because he cares, because he wants he cares about the process and he wants to have as much good footage as possible. Which, uh, while it can, if you're not used to it, can seem like a bit of a pain. You realize, seriously, you realize during the process that the more good footage he gets, the better everybody's going to look, the better it's going to turn out. It has been a blast, and I think regardless of what happens with this, we've made friendships that'll go beyond two doors down. Really what we want to do is reach out to people who are just your regular TV watchers or people who uh, are in corporate America and we want to get them to take part. We want them to say that's a great idea to have our product in that uh, that independent movie or show um, and it's something worthwhile supporting and the arts really are worthwhile supporting and and they're just taking a uh, bloom here in Columbus, I would, I would urge everybody to just step in and share in it. Next up, Peter John Ross will host a roundtable discussion about the science fiction web series, Aiden Five. Aiden Five is an amazing science fiction series from director John Jackson, producer Ben Bayes, and editor Tim Baldwin, who I sat down with for the roundtable. Let's take a look at Aiden Five. Tell me the story of where did Aiden 5 start? Uh, I think it's the 48 Hour Film Festival. Um, I wanted to get involved in 48 Hour, Film Fest, 48 Hour Film Festival, and I got a hold of you, and I said, do you want to do this? And you're like, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And I think you just took the ball and got the registration and everything. I know for me, I wanted to do, I just hadn't been challenged lately. I've been yeah. working professionally there, but you have clients, you got budgets, you got deadlines, and I'm like, I just want to it's be not, challenged. It's not the same creativity, yeah, is yeah. it? Yeah. Well, so, so yeah. just just run down basically what is the forty hour film project? Seven it's Friday night, seven o'clock. You get the genre, yeah. line of dialogue, line of dialogue, character, character and a prop. All randomly, all randomly, randomly select. drawn. 48 you got forty eight hours. hours to make a make a movie. So you deliver it, finished. Yeah. Yeah. Five to what is five to seven minutes long. So you guys got the idea to do eight and five. We drew. Uh, I picked science fiction out of the hat, which I mean, lucked out know. because Johnny was. 
very adamant of shooting everything on green screen, no matter what we would have <laughs> yeah, gotten. So, that was, which I was like, what happens if we get romantic comedy? Uh, it's going on green it's screen. It's going on green screen, because I don't want to drive all over town or do anything. I'm like, yeah. But then we got sci-fi, and it just... It worked. I'm like, all right, cool. So we spent so much time that night developing the world before we really yeah. attacked the script, too. So it was like, all right, there can only be five of them. Why? I don't know. There's, <laughs> at yeah, this we have moment, to make a reason. We, just, we, yeah, we tried to make a reason yeah. for everything. And, and we probably had an hour of script writing. Now, there was three hours or so before that of literally eliminating what we didn't want to do and saying, how can this work? And it's like, it's all hand-drawn, and I just kept trying to, let's just let's not let that constrain us. We'll write. We'll write as big as we can, and then we'll. Because yeah, we had we had Ben Brown, the the draw the, the artist, yeah. and he and he's an amazing artist, and for some yeah. reason like he can draw the background. Could you also shingle not only is it science fiction, you kind of hung kind of a noir yeah. style onto the movie. That that was a uh, I'm a noir fan, um, you know that was always in the back of my head, and whatever I drew out of that, I was probably going to have a noir flavor again. If we had musical, I would have done something slanted towards that. So I thought the drawings worked well. Um, it helped. Um, I knew it was going to help us in that time frame uh, to compile all that. Um, so I was just very conscious of that. Like, man, we go black and white. It can be grainy. It, you know, basically we can get away with some low-tech visual effects is what I was thinking, the just was, to hide it. The you timing know. was the most. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you won both an audience award and then the judges award, I think. Yeah. Big one. And we won the yeah. big one. And then... We were, we were, you, he Miami, went Miami yeah. to the film of Palooza, and it was oh, so what third, that is, right? So when they had the best of each city, all competed against mm -hmm. each competed other. How Miami. did you do with that? Then? Um, the third, third, third place, place. And, overall. And, overall. Yeah, at the Miami film yeah, festival. Yeah, it was yeah. it was uh, Paris, uh, London, London, and then and then, and then Columbus, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. So, yeah. Another one down. This is the third time today I've seen my lifeless face. So how did you go from the 48-hour film product short into the idea of expanding it into a web series? Well, I, yeah. I saw the film, you know, like you did. I, I, um, uh, I had been hearing about it, you know, Johnny and, and those guys were, were doing, heard we're doing, he's, I heard he's doing a green screen project and, um, and so I went that night to sit down and watch it, and like everybody else, was blown away by how amazing the production was, and um, couldn't believe they had done it in that in 48 hours. And so um, uh, afterwards, I ended up getting together with Johnny and just saying, "Man, it's such a great, such a great accomplishment." But on top of that, it's such a great world that you guys created, and I wanted to know more about the world. I wanted to know more about the characters. I wanted to know more about the storyline. There's so much potential for it. So we talked about what, what the series would look like and um, how could we do it in a way that, was, that it was built off the 48-hour model mm -hmm. where we didn't have to spend any money, where we didn't have to turn this into this massive production, do it from a lo-fi standpoint, but make something unique and, mm -hmm. and make a but still keep a, the quality up. Yeah, yeah, yeah as much as, much as you can when you're doing something, up, yeah. yeah, on a, on a yeah. On a pro bono basis, one of the things we said very early on was that um, you know the visual style is really cool, and that's that's the hook that's going to get people there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's the story and the characters that are going to yeah. keep them there, and so we really wanted that early on to be uh, the focus and the driving force behind the series. Because if we weren't interested in in watching it, if it didn't yeah. if it didn't get us excited, then you know why would it get our audience excited? So and we uh, it was like midnight, and we pitched the idea, and you know drew out the story arc on a whiteboard, and um, I think that's when we all kind of started seeing it take shape, and then spent um, pretty much the next nine months uh, yeah. as we even even into shoot well into shooting, we were still writing still scripts writing. and revising scripts and. Um, and, and everybody, you know, really on the team, that's when it really started to take shape. Because, you know, we had, we had, had a structure, you know, to the, to the series as a whole. But it was really when, um, you know, everybody, the writers came together mm -hmm. and started putting flesh on it and, and giving the characters lives and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, really honing out the specifics of each episode, it really started to... So tell me about what your role was on the web series as opposed to, you know, the original short. Like, what was your role then? <laughs> Producer, director, writer, 
craft service, <laughs> um, audio, um, grip. I mean, literally, it was uh, it, every role. I mean, I mean, I suppose the top few. You know, I, I still directed them and um, produced them. Those were very long months yeah. um, in the time that we were before we started shooting, and there was a lot of um, a lot of things. And I really do think it was a it was a group effort. It was a team effort. And in the same way, the production was a team effort. Um, at no point uh, during any of this process yeah. could we have done um, 15 episodes without everybody showing up. Yeah. And that's really the thing about this mm -hmm. project that kind of surprised us and, and was a real inspiration, I think, to the local filmmaking community was how many people showed oh. up with no, for no pay. You know, to see that kind of dedication with an entire crew yeah. of people who came and were there consistently every yeah. time we went out and shot. I'd always be amazed at, you know, I, I'm very conscious of all those people that are on there and it's why we're pushing, you know, to finish the show and just to do right by everyone who volunteered. I'd always be amazed because people are just like, would come up to you, go, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, are you kidding? You're, you've been standing here for 18 hours. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we, we, you should be killing me, you know? <laughs> now take this and show it. It's a, you take it wherever you want, it's yours. You know, you were part of this. If it gets you any other job, whatever you can do with it or and be paid for, that's what I want to do. So, yeah. For more information on the filmmakers or if you would like a DVD of tonight's program, please visit www.framelines.tv. Love saying this, that's a wrap. We'll see you next time on Framelines.